Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Fine, ma'am. Fine, ma'am. Good. How are you, ma'am? So, decided finally where you would be joining it? Uh, not yet, ma'am. I'm still considering the options. Okay. I was thinking you would have been sure by now. <laughs> okay. Take your time. Make sure that you take the right decision. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. Okay. So, Joy, let's let's talk about you know uh, you you know you go ahead and tell the audience about uh, what you have cleared, which exams you gave, and what was your journey about. Okay. So, ma'am, I joined for the Artha Point course last year uh, by, I think, the end of June. So, this year I gave my uh, JAM, GATE and CVT PG entrances. And I'm, I was fortunate to get the 8th rank in JAM, uh, 12th rank in GATE and 9th rank in CVT. Yeah. Yes. And how, how did that happen? What was your journey like? What did you prepare? How did it go? So, in the beginning few months, like, I had the liberty of time with me. So, since we started off with microeconomics, I think uh, since we were only focused on that subject for the initial few months, I was able to go ahead and revise micro in quite detail. So, ever, like, when we had these um, full subject tests in micro, I, I was able to go ahead and repeat the DPP starting from uh, the first one. And again, the revision was taken side by side. So I think that helped me in the initial stages to like form my base in micro especially. And then as we started off with subjects like stats and macro again, though it started to get a bit hectic, still I was able to keep up with the revisions and DPPs. And then uh, I think by the end of November or something, like I started doing the other subjects as well. Okay, maths was also going side by side, but... Um, as it started getting a bit hectic, I was not able to finish all the DPPs in maths. I think it was at that point that I'd contacted you as well. Like I was, I felt I was lacking a bit of practice because I was mostly focusing on those topics in which I felt a bit weak. So when I contacted you, you said uh, stick with the question bank and also the PYQs because when we do that, it usually covers most of the questions that come for the exams. And I think it, uh, it helped me, it worked in my favor. So it went well. And aside me, I was also looking into other subjects like Dev Eco International. But how, uh, having said that, I was devoting most of my time to the major four subjects, microstat and yeah. And maths and... Uh, maths and macro, yeah. So usually, you know, this is, this is what I tell students that initially focus a lot of your time on micro because it's the most tricky subject. Like yes, you... Correct. Done theoretically microeconomics in your college and what comes in exam is very practical in nature other subjects like macro you always see theory there and see theory here so it's doable so were you able to go ahead and complete the syllabus by november or were you lagging behind and you know how many hours were you dedicating on daily basis what do you suggest students to do Okay, so concept wise, yes, I feel I was able to touch upon almost the entire syllabus. If not by November, I feel almost by the first week of December, at least I felt concept wise, I was able to touch all the subjects. And like I said, math was one area I felt I lacked a bit of practice, but I was simultaneously doing the question banks and uh, the PYQs. So hours I sat I think initially I started off slowly because I didn't want to like worn out myself in the beginning itself so uh, I think when I started my preparation from June I was sitting for maybe like four to five hours on a daily basis then slowly I increased my time so I think by the month of January like a month prior to the exams like jam and gate I think I was sitting for maybe like 10 hours on an average for studies yeah Four to five itself is good enough to start. Yeah. <laughs> it's very good. Okay. So uh, did you give all the mock papers or did you just leave the mock papers? No. Um, actually, I think everyone would agree with me that the mock papers were actually a bit tougher than the actual exams. So the mocks were indeed really helpful because um, I think I started giving mocks by the end of November or starting of December. So before I jumped on to the PYQs, I had actually started with the mock papers. So I think I had done four to five. 
so from mocks when you jump to pyqs actually i'm not saying it is easy but you feel good like i felt like i was going in the right track so for jam and gate yes i did all the mock papers so like i said by i think december end i finished up to like five mocks and i had also revised the five mocks and then and I also i was doing the the pyq side by side and since in jam you don't have a lot of pyqs i think it gets a bit easier as well you just have four or four past years and then um, in by january i finished the other five mock as well and i kept on repeating so the month prior to jam and gate i was solely focused on the mock papers and the past years got it it yeah so usually you know when it happens with a lot of students when you give your first exam like in this case this time it was iit sometimes it's gate you get a you get a little overwhelmed like you know yeah true true even if you have done very well you may feel that you know probably didn't went that good and then the next 2 3 weeks just you you go back and keep looking at that first paper that you had given and whether you have done it right or not and you don't get past it to prepare for the next one so how was your journey once you came out of the examination hall what made you prepare well for the other two exams major exams gate and cvt this year i think it applies well because usually when we uh, when we were preparing for jam we had a estimation as to what would be a good score so usually we say that a score of close to like above 60 or 65 plus for a general category is good enough so i also went into the exam with that kind of a notion that a 60 plus score would be good but uh, when i gave the exam and i came out i felt happy the exam went well but the problem was it went well for i think everyone <laughs> so that kept me a bit anxious because i was not able to estimate like what would be a good score now so i knew that i should definitely get a score at least above 70 to have a chance in the first allotment itself so i was a bit anxious that way and like you said uh, since jam was the first exam in a way i think my attention was primarily towards jam because you want to get the first exam right so in that way after jam i did feel a bit exhausted uh, but since gate was just two weeks away i think i was able to prepare for gate but after gate was when i think i really struggled <laughs> because <laughs> you, i i was really exhausted so and i think for the initial one week i was struggling to start studying also but then cuvt 2 i was somehow i, I think uh, as you see the deadline approaching as you see the exam date approaching and you're not sure about your result in jam as well because the results were announced so i think slowly it starts to get into you that you no know, you have to start it yeah right so you know tell your experience of cuet because this time i know students were not happy i mean i remember doing late night counseling with students and uh, i mean days and days just went counseling with students the paper was completely unexpected so Correct. how did it went and you know how did you end up getting such a good rank there um for cuet like i said the initial few days were a bit of trouble so i think um i i did all the mocks but uh, i don't think i was able to repeat all the mocks like in a full fledged manner what i did was uh, so in cuet we have these questions like who gave what what all theories and it's not really humanly possible to remember all these so what i did was i did keep a note of all the extra uh, point like such questions who gave what the dates such questions i kept a note of from the mocks and also uh, we have videos in youtube as well uh, your videos in the youtube so i think that also helped a lot in to an extent to grasp all such important content but still i'm sure that you know it's not possible so um uh, when you're talking about these dates and stuff i mainly looked at the dates for the important events the important schemes and etc and for others i mainly checked for the uh, names of authors books and etc but in this year cvt they actually asked for the chronology so i didn't attempt all, uh, all those obviously and like i said i felt cvt is a really unpredictable exam how much ever you go through the syllabus is so vast they can ask you from anywhere so going into the exam like everyone i was also expecting a score in 240s or 250s to get through and after the exam i was sure that like no way i'm 
ever being close to a 240. <laughs> so, yeah, that was there. But seeing that it was difficult for everyone, I thought maybe, you know, the cutoffs would be low. But again, so because of the CUVT, I feel uh, whenever we target such entrance exams, I think we must consider all the exams, not just one particular exam like CUVT because it's really uncertain. So that is something I feel everyone should look at all the available options instead of just focusing on one such exam. That definitely is true. I mean, you at least keep four to five exams in your mind. Okay. IIT, CUVT, ISI. And other than that, you should actually go ahead and give MSc also, Jami also, IAF also, because it is indeed very uncertain. And, you know, I myself, I was jokingly telling everyone that, you know, had I been in this era of, you know, you guys, probably I wouldn't have ever got at DSC because I am not one of those who can mug up these things. I don't know how you guys do it, how, do, how you guys remember all these dates and events and things. And we were lucky enough that during our time, DSE was completely mathematical exam and it was all concept-based exam. But it is so unpredictable and it is, it's not even testing any knowledge anymore. I mean, right, like, yeah. to be frank. Hats off to you guys, how you remember so much of data in your mind. And it makes no sense. I mean, just imagine, why do you want to remember something which is completely yeah, predictable? On and I don't think a week after the exam, anyone would be remembering all these also. I know, I know. And not only that, I mean, it's not even useful once you get into a good institute. Correct, yeah. Either DSC, nor IGIDR, not ISI, uh, IID, anyone would be testing you for the next two years. And after you get into job, absolutely useless. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure why they are, I mean... It makes still sense if you get, you know, want to go to IAS or IES or probably you want to clear net. But other than that, for a master's student, it doesn't really make sense. So even though the <laughs> pattern of jam also was a bit different, I felt it was still within the syllabus. Within the but uh, CUET again, the they also asked estimates about the previous year budgets, which I don't know if anyone would be able to answer all those. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're preparing for economics optional yeah, or IES. So, okay, all good, all well now. So, we are satisfied. So, you know, just can you go ahead and tell the upcoming batch as to how they should start their preparation? When exactly is the right time to start the preparation? I don't know. Like, uh, I took a drop year for preparation. So, for a third year student, I don't know. Like, Maybe from the third semester would be a good time, I feel. But again, I know it's difficult because I wasn't able to manage both my graduation and my coaching, I mean, entrance exams. But other than that, in terms of preparation, I feel uh, we must take the first five months. If, if, uh, if I'm talking about myself, when I started from June, the first uh, initial few months, at least till November, must be taken towards concept building. And then I feel if I, if a person is targeting jam, especially the last two months would be like, or should be uh, given priority for uh, mock tests and PYQs. Because especially I would focus on mock tests because jam is a three hour long exam. So it's not always possible that you can sit through the exam. Most often than not, by the end of two hours, you get exhausted or you lose focus. So I think mock tests are really essential. Also uh, in mock tests, there may arise, especially uh, in our batch, I feel all of us have come across a situation wherein you might not get four questions in a row and that might cause a bit of panic. So I think it is essential that we get uh, accustomed to such a situation and that would not that would help us in the actual scenario. Also, um, yeah, one problem for me was that uh, the timing of the exam is just after lunch the time from two to five. So that was a bit troublesome for me. So what I did was in the previous month in January, at least the last four, uh, four to five mocks, I started taking it in that time slot, the two to five slot. I think that also really helped me. I don't know about others, but yeah. Good. And that's addition. I mean, I never thought it that way, but it's a good thing that students should keep in mind to practice it in the same time slot. Yeah. Good. Okay, so uh, I wish you all the best for your future ahead. Thank you, Mami. You know, once you select 
your institute because now you have three or four good options keep me uh in you know just keep me informed let me know where Sure, you can sure. be seen in Sure, ma'am. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. all the very best for your future Thank you, ma'am. And thank you for this platform also, ma'am, to present myself. Thank you so much. thank you for your time bye